Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Arlington Board of Selectmen's meeting for February 12th, 2015. Uh, it is 7.15 and a little past, so I do call this meeting to order. Um, just a reminder that um, we are being filmed by ACMI, so please smile while on the camera. And um, I'd also like to um, note that due to some scheduling issues, um, I do appreciate everyone's patience with the weather. And um, you may have seen that we were slated originally to uh, start our warrant hearings tonight, but we'll be doing those at our next meeting um, due to some scheduling conflicts. Um, that um, being said, we also um, had an addend emergency addendum um, that will start the meeting off. So I'll send it right over to Adam to get started. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this item is in regards to temporary suspension of metered parking in both, uh, both of the municipal lots that are metered currently. Would you like an update on snow and ice as part of this agenda item or under new business? I think that would be excellent. Okay. Uh, so the item that I would request the board's action for that uh, we, we didn't presume would be happening uh, for the posting of this meeting, uh, it's come to our attention that the meters uh, in, in this weather have, have, have had significant operational problems and have been failing. Uh, as well as creating a, just a real significant challenge to keep them cleared and accessible uh, with the continued snow falling and frankly the higher priorities at this point uh, for our DPW resources. So until we get through the thick of what we're dealing with, I wanted to ask the board to vote to sus temporarily suspend metered parking. Still keep the three hour limits that are in there today uh, in the lots, but suspend the use of the meters uh, until further notice. Move approval to suspend the uh, meters in the municipal parking lots until further notified. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Joe. I, I was just wondering, and I don't know if I should ask, if through you, Mr. Chair, if I should ask the, the manager or, or the uh, parking crew, is there some way to hood them or, um, or or mark clearly that they're not in operation? Yeah, I know we, we, we were going to try to hood them. And I don't know if we have a formal hood, but we we're going to try to put bags over them so that would be clear that they were not, yeah. not open at all. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of oh, discussion from the crowd? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Adam. Please. In general, I uh, wanted to provide the board and the public uh, a quick update on the status of snow and ice removal. Uh, I know I've updated the board via email. We've sent out town notices to residents. Uh, also sat with ACMI today for their Thursday news broadcast to just do a brief update. Uh, so. Very, very quickly, uh, we are still focused on the mains. We've been doing overnight removal on Mass Ave. Uh, started that last week, got interrupted by the last snowstorm, and then started again last night. We'll be continuing that work tonight. We have crews in from MEMA. Uh, that, uh, they provided us one crew that's been cleaning actually Broadway all day <coughs> today, trying to widen out Broadway. We've also had crews focusing on routes to schools in terms of crosswalks and safe access for children to schools. Uh, once we get through that, our next priority uh, moving into next week will be uh, starting to look at what we can do in a widening effort in the neighborhoods to try to alleviate some of the burden of the parking ban. Uh, before we get to that, uh, we're trying to moderate the use of our resources with this storm that's being forecast for Saturday night into Sunday. There's still varied forecasts. I, you know, we're waiting to see how that gets refined uh, before we make any firm decisions about what we think we can dispatch next week. Once we get through th that, uh, once we get through the weekend, then we'll be able to see next week again what we can do in the neighborhoods. Um, whether it be one side or the other and try to get some parking back and get some normalcy back. Um, the only other thing I'll say is I have to just thank all of the staff at DPW immensely for the hours upon hours that they've put in. Uh, it has been incredibly tough uh, and they've just been amazing and, and been amazingly committed. Uh, and Jimmy Dodge, the operations manager, has been incredible managing the operation and Mike Rademacher is just a, he's a superhero. So if you, if you see Mike, anybody sees Mike, Please say thank you. Um, uh, and, they, and then I'd also like, like to thank residents for their uh, patience and, and reasonableness. I think gen generally every day I've come into work uh, the past couple of weeks, I've been expecting a lot more calls and visits to the office that, that haven't been there. And I think it, it, it's a testament to the, the patience and understanding of the, of the population. And I appreciate that. That's it. Thank you very much, Adam. Uh, comments from the board? Dan? Yeah, this is now appropriate yeah. time. Okay, so I, I briefly spoke to Stephen before about that I wanted to express, for, I mean, first of all, to echo what Adam had said about the town employees who've done the work that, that they have. And, but the other, the thing that I think we all as a 
town need to remember is that we're in an unprecedented situation. Like most of us are, were around one way or another for Blizzard of 78, though some of us might have been six. And, uh, <laughs> but we've passed. And others of us, Dan? Others of us were not. <laughs> others of us weren't even born then. <laughs> we're, weren't even a thought at that point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, seri but, but I mean, seriously, we've got more snow in one week than we did in 78. We've got more wear in, in two weeks than we did in 78. We've got more snow than a month in 78. And so we are in what is unprecedented territory, and we need to think about that. And just it means that we're going to have to hold our temper, and it means we're going to have to be thoughtful for longer than we're useful. And I very specifically wore my Red Sox tie today. I very carefully decide what ties to wear because today was yes. the first day of spring. Yes. And so we just have to remember there is an end to what we're all enduring. And I think it's important that, uh, like, I'm, I'm delighted with how it's been going so far, but we're going to have to hold our tongues and breathe deep for a little while longer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dan. Dan. Um, we've all had this conversation, but given the intensity of the storms and the veracity and the frequency, I've gotten maybe two, if you want to call them complaints, and even then they've been apologetic. Um, looking at other cities and towns, Arlington's doing a fantastic job driving down the Ave tonight. I saw all the signs that said, no parking here, you know, there'll be a massive snow bank um, effort tonight. Uh, I did have a conversation, as we all have, with the manager um, pending 24 hours and how the Doppler looks in the incoming storm for Saturday night to Sunday morning. I had just posed to the manager, as we all have, um, if perhaps the eight or nine um, DPW employees on the snow fighters, if we, if it's projected that it's definitely going to be a really big storm, I definitely appreciate, you know, the effort out here. If we can give them uh, just those eight or nine, I'm just using that number. I think there's eight or nine snow fighters that are um, maybe giving them the 12 hours before. If it's forecast that they're going to be working once again, because they're just running on, you know, caffeine and whatever yeah. mm -hmm. store that's open, Cumberland Farms, that can give them something to eat. Um, if it's if it's doable. Yeah, no, I, th I think it will be doable. And, and Jim Dodge and, and Dan Warren have been very good about cycling in when we can mm -hmm. try to be as safe as possible with the with the drivers, particularly of the large equipment that you mentioned. Thank you. Joe. Th thank you. Um, I, I don't want to repeat too much what's said, but I think it has been uh, remarkable that the, the low number of complaints that, that, that we've gotten. I'll note that I was down last night at the, um, there was the MWRA uh, informational meeting about some water lines going in, and when Mr. Rademacher was uh, introduced, all the residents who were there applauded him, and I don't think they're applauding because their streets are about to get ripped up and, uh, <laughs> for a water line. So I, I think folks recognize the effort that's in, in there. I'd also note that I, I think a large part of the reason that we're not getting as many questions and such is just the, the excellent uh, public information effort. It, it's been just extraordinary, um, I think, between the emails and the the uh, calls to the home. Uh, it's been just, just extraordinary with links to extra information and where decisions haven't been made, making very clear when they're going to be made and, and how to find out. So th thank you to the manager and to uh, Ms. Roman and the rest of your, your uh, staff for that. And for anybody who's watching, if you are not signed up for the, um, <clears throat> the alerts on the, on, uh, from the town, this is the time to go now and to go to the town's website and to sign up. You can sign up for uh, telephone alerts for um, <clears throat> uh, email alerts, and uh, also we have our social media presence. So thank you. I think the public information piece is, is key in something like this. So. Thank you. Eric. Kevin. Yeah, and I, I'm sorry to be redundant, but it is such an extraordinary effort. It deserves redundancy. Uh, it's something like 120 miles of road in in the town of Arlington. Public and private. Uh, public. So does that not even count the private ways? Well, the public and private is 125. Public yeah. 120, 125. 120. Yeah. And I know each of the last uh, the three storms, I have three times had to go out. And I have a nice snow blower. I feel like a real man behind this thing. It's got a headlight and everything. This baby will blow you. pebbles, if, you know, unfortunately pebbles. But, but, you know, I've had to my driveway, my home, three times per storm. How many times has, have plows had to go 120 miles? Uh, uh, to cover it. So, you know, uh, from Adam, Michael Rademacher, uh, Chief Bob Jefferson, head of uh, emergency services, uh, the police, and especially the public works employees. It's just uh, phenomenal uh, what they've been able to achieve and the number of private contractors we have right. who also yeah. uh, have been doing the job and, and the public's uh, 
you know, being patient. Uh, I, I almost get into a fight with a woman in my um, water Pilates class because we're not giving out tickets for people not shoveling their walkways. And, you know, I, I, there's 17,000 home sites in Arlington. Can you imagine the manpower, woman per, people power it would take to check all of those sidewalks, you know, and it, everybody's doing the best that they can, but uh, I'm very proud of, of the people that, that work for this town and the job they've done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, I agree with everyone, what everyone said tonight, and I'm very appreciative um, of everyone involved as well. So uh, that being said, um, we'll move on. Mr. Gilligan, a uh, authorized sale of $750,000 in MWA water bonds. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, I appreciate your time. Uh, what you have before you are the certificates for a water bond for $750,000. It is a no interest water bond loan from the MWRA, the Massachusetts Water Resource Authority. It is for water main and water facilities. That's part of the program uh, that our Director of Public Works, Michael Rademacher, has been uh, working on for years under the auspices of the town manager. Uh, you recently took a vote to approve a financial agreement and a loan instrument about a month ago. This is the follow-up to that. Your vote to authorize and execute the bond will mean that on the 26th of February, we will receive $750,000 for the water mains, and we will pay that back in 10 installments of $75,000 each over the next 10 years, beginning the next fiscal year at no interest. And this is in keeping with the water program that's been underway for quite some time. Um, I will remind the board, if you don't mind, that a year ago uh, the MWRA suspended its water loan program and I uh, picked up the phone and called Mr. Rademacher and we both decided that we'd call our contacts and say, hey, uh, gee, do you really want to discontinue this? And we both got the same answer. Thanks for reminding us. We'll get back to you and the program's back in place. Thank you very much. So it's all good news. Good. Thanks. Any questions from the board? Kevin. No, uh, great job as always, Mr. Gilligan. Uh, move approval. Uh, Thank you. Do you need me to read this whole vote, Steve? Uh, you don't need to. All you need to do is move approval as as the vote is recommended on language. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion from the board, Joe. Yeah, I just have one quick question. Thank you. Thank you for the work on this. Um, you, you said that we'll this will proceed for ten years out. Um, Not the work, just the repayment. No, the repayments. Right. But I noticed that the um, what we're voting tonight only goes through 2020. No, uh, on the other side. 20. On the other side. You have two. Two columns. Two columns. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, further discussion from the board? Seeing none, discussion from the crowd? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Gilligan. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dave. Moving on. Request for the endorsement of the Unequal Justice Program from uh, the Vision 2020 Diversity Task Group, Miriam Stein. Yes, ma'am. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I would also like to thank Miriam for being um, thank you. so flexible with her schedule and uh, working with us as we reschedule these meetings uh, time and time again. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Miriam Stein. I've lived in Arlington since 1974. I'm here representing the Vision 2020 Diversity Task Group. We're here to ask you to join the other co 20 co-sponsors of the program Unequal Justice, Consequences of Race and Class in our Criminal Justice System. This is part of a series of diversity conversations that we started at the Diversity Task Group last spring and your last sheet lists some of the topics. Um, we chose this topic regarding the criminal justice system and race and class as a follow up to the December vigil, um, Black Lives Matter, which was attended by 400 people, 400 residents in Arlington. Uh, we, you can see from the flyer, the speakers are Fred Ryan, Peniel Joseph, um, professor from uh, Suffolk Law School and a parole reform activists. The second sheet on your handout lists the 20 other co-sponsors, including the library, Arlington Public Schools, 
St. Agnes, St. Eulalius, um, and a whole bunch of other groups. And we would very much like to add the Board of Selectmen as one of the co-sponsors. Be happy to answer questions. Thank you very much, Miriam. Questions from the board? Move approval. Second. second. We have a move approval and a second. Discussion. Joe. I would just note that I'm very happy. I, I saw an earlier version of this flyer, and it's it's so nice to see Chief Ryan's name on here rather than the yeah. placeholder uh, yeah. of the acting police chief. So thank you. Thank you very much um, for the discussion. Dan. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy to support this, and I think I want to the, the I must admit when I the first the, the thing when I first saw the email come in, uh, I kind of my heart skipped a little and I was like uh oh like is this going to be is this conf is this going to be unnecessarily confrontational and I have the thing that I was I've been delighted to see is that it is cooperative and it is um, and I think it's really a, a great way to approach this program and uh, I'm, I'm delighted to support it because I think it is positive and, uh, you know if there are other communities who haven't been able to do it as successfully and so I'm, I'm happy to support it an important um, strategy of Vision 2020 is to collaborate with everyone in town, including town bodies. So we're, that that is our approach. Great. Thank you very much. Further discussion? Seeing none. Discussion from the crowd? Seeing none. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. much. Moving on to the consent agenda. We have minutes of meetings from February 5th, 2015. We have a reappointment to the Open Space Committee, Elizabeth Carpati. Request for a one-day beer and wine license for February 27th at the Robbins Library for Books and Bloom fundraiser. We have a request for a one-day beer and wine license for March 14th, 2015 at Robbins Memorial Town Hall Auditorium for South Sudanese Enrichment for Families Gala, Ron Moulton and Catherine Lennox. Um, do we have a motion? We have a motion and a second. Second. Um, further discussion from the crowd. Hello, Patsy. Thank you very much. Well, the Super Bowl got us through the beginning of the storms, and this is something <laughs> that maybe will get us through the end of the storms. Uh, Books and Bloom is a very fun event that's held at Robbins Library. It's co-sponsored by the Arlington Garden Club and the um, Friends of Library. So it's a fundraiser It benefits both of those groups. Uh, it's a takeoff on art and bloom. And uh, rather than a painting being displayed in flowers, it's a book that's being displayed in flowers. And of course, you know how beautiful our library is. So it's just a beautiful setting for something like this. Um, it's Friday, February 27th, just a couple of weeks away from 7 to 9. Tickets are available at the library and also through me. They're $25 ahead of time and 30 at the door. Some of the books that are being displayed this year are um, The World Atlas, which I'm doing, uh, Child's Garden of Verses. Uh, Elaine Shea is doing The Little Engine That Could in honor of her husband, <laughs> Bill. Uh, uh, something called The per Perfume Collector. My sister lives on the mantelpiece and many others. So really a fun event. We've sold out the last three times. So I urge people to come and have a really fun night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, we have a question. Yes, Mr. Uh, Greeley. Um, just curious, what are the flowers um, used for the book uh, Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> Is that not one being sponsored this year? No, this was last year. We're <laughs> <laughs> on tonight, huh? That's a great season. It's a great event. I hope to get there. Yeah, so my parents are watching. So, <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. I haven't read the book, so. <laughs> Thank you, Patsy. Uh, Thank you. Is anyone here to discuss any other um, issues on the consent agenda? <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, discussion from the board. <laughs> Seeing none. Uh, we had a uh, motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Um, <laughs> We'll move on to the public hearing. We have a uh, petition from NSTAR on uh, Bailey Road, Massachusetts Avenue. Geez, I don't know how I'm going to follow that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, NSTAR Electric would like to um, put a 107 feet of uh, conduit on Bailey Road and Mass Ave. And this is um, for system improvement and system reliability. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, discussion from the board? 
Seeing none, um, discussion, no one in the crowd. Um, <laughs> slow night. Um, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Safe ride home, Jack. Um, Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. I will note uh, before that vote was taken, uh, we have a note that all the abutters were notified. So I'm happy about that. The thing I like about the, this particular one is that the map includes the buried railroad tracks underneath Mass Ave, which is <laughs> always great to see. Don't dig there. <laughs> <laughs> Or, yeah, not, there's, okay. no, there's no functional trains to put on it anymore, so yeah, it's okay. That's right. Um, Just as there are no citizens in the hall here. For no. But, um, so we'll read it anyway. Uh, citizens Open Forum. Um, we, um, if anyone watching at home, if you do plan on coming to Citizens Open Forum moving forward, uh, there is a sign-in sheet outside, so please uh, sign into that before coming in. Um, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Um, there is no one here for this open forum. So moving on to traffic rules and orders, another business, a discussion regarding uh, Chestnut Street parking issues uh, led by Mr. Greeley. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, through the manager and Corey, we, we did look at this, but uh, it's, 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 at this time, it's not advised that we make any changes. Uh, to be honest, what's happening is there, there's a, uh, the small business there, and it has few spaces, but the employees are taking the spaces, so they're complaining that there's no space for their guests. So, of course, our first recommendation to them would be you go and park in the municipal lot and leave your interior spaces. I think it's six. Is that, do you remember, Adam? Uh, Five or six. I mean, yeah, that's Mary, right, yeah. sound right? Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Uh, and let your clients use the interior spaces, uh, but we can't, you know, the, the um, uh, fire chief, the police were all against uh, changing. Uh, what they were hoping is that right along St. Agnes we would allow... Uh, more parking so the recommendation is, is uh, that that I move approval of the recommendation to not make any changes is that move right? no action yeah. move no, is that the way I should yeah. say move second. no action we have a motion and a second um, I will note that um, after um, what we uh, there is a temporary suspension um, that we voted on earlier so that might provide some temporary relief and we are getting the um, parking study um, group finalized and we'll be meeting shortly so hopefully there will be um, I don't want to say there will be relief but uh, it's certainly an area we'll be considering um, that being said further discussion Joe uh, just wondering have all of the appointees uh, appointments been made for the parking uh, we're, um, uh, implementation we're, in the, group? we're in the process of finalizing it um, mm -hmm. right now we are uh, we did accept um, resumes and applicants so uh, we're still weeding through those okay. right Thank you. Thanks. Dan. I just will note that, I mean, it's obvious to us, but it's worth mentioning that between the funeral home on one side and a church on the other is that there's a lot of really, I'd call it like burst parking. Like it's very event driven and yeah. it's and it's problematic. And there's definitely, I mean, I, I won't pick on the church too much, but I will say that on Sunday morning, sometimes there are people who do things there that really deserve tickets. And uh, I, I'm frankly glad that we're doing some more enforcement down there. Thank you very much. Um, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. And sure, Mr. Chairman, but they were notified, right? This yes. is on oh, the yes. agenda. Yes, yeah, we contacted mm -hmm. them. And we'll now we notify them yes. about the. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, that wraps up tonight's agenda. So, um, <laughs> new business, Miriam. Uh, no new business. Doug. No new business. Yeah. I just wanted to officially announce, I, I can't recall if we talked about it at the last meeting, but the Budget and Revenue Task Force, which was impacted by one of the earlier storms, will be held prior to the Board's next meeting on February 23rd at 6 p.m. Thank you very much. Kevin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Only uh, that Marianne watch me here. We hope on February 23rd to have a preliminary on parking, or no, it's the March. It's going to be March 9th. March 9th, excuse me. So uh, I have nothing, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> Diane? Just um, two things um, for the chairman when he deems appropriate with the town manager. What are steps we need to be taking for the Community Preservation Act in terms of the Warren article, in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, the committee, when we should start 
sort of scouting out interest for things like that. I'll leave it to the chairman for an appropriate time on that. Okay. And then um, this is sort of a rhetorical new business. Um, Mr. Greeley and I have uh, experienced this firsthand um, when we had that microburst, but I did have a conversation, as my colleagues did with the town manager now, that we're in the middle of this storm and MEMA is involved and that there's the possibility of some federal funding, as well as there will be a supplemental um, filed by so some of our state legislators. And I foolishly asked the town manager if he felt uh, that he was up to speed in terms of tracking all these costs um, of the storm, which again is really a, more of a rhetorical question. He was already aware of, the, of both of those avenues. Um, and I guess whatever, um, the MEMA, you've got that down pat, um, perhaps at the Budget and Revenue Task Force meeting. Um, I don't know if that's an appropriate um, discussion, but I do know different reps and senators have already, especially of cities, Worcester and, and Somerville and likewise, but we do have a Arlington delegation. Perhaps we can ask them to, you know, every little bit helps. As the town manager pointed out from MEMA, we may not get it for 12 to 24 months, but everyone is talking that there will be a supplemental, and I think it's whoever gets in there first, fast and furious. So I just wanted to put that before us all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Dan. I uh, just wanted to let the board know that uh, last week, uh, Joe and Adam and I went to Minuteman for their most recent update, and they unveiled some um, proposed buildings there was, uh, I forget the exact ones, but there's like build new, there's build renovate, there's just renovate. They also had a much less involved um, version of a no state money aspect of it. And uh, I guess I, I have some editorial thoughts on what I think about those building plans. Of course, the other thing that's going on, I guess I'll, I'll share the editorial thought. My editorial thought is that they are aiming for a school that I think is um, I am unconvinced. They, they think that they can get 620 students out of the sending towns, and I think they're wildly optimistic. What are they currently then achieving? Like, no, uh, about 340 from the sending towns. From the sending towns. And the, uh, so they, their theory is, you know, build a new school and we'll get a higher enrollment, which, enrollment. yeah, and I agree that they will, but they literally are saying 50% more in, yeah. based on it, and I just, I just don't buy it. Um, the second aspect of that, as we all know, is the regional agreement, which has 10 towns approved and six that haven't. And uh, I did not walk out of that meeting feeling like we were going to turn six of those towns into yeses either. So we'll see. It'll play out. Um, oh, and the other aspect, the, the, the other piece of news is that, to me anyway, was that the uh, MSBA had originally said that the deadline for choosing which plan was to be this January, as in last month and they gave yet another extension, which common wisdom is would be the last until, was it July, Adam? May. This, uh, oh, uh, July, July. I thought it was 2016, July. yeah. No, this oh, year. this year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the next step. Right, for the next step. Select right. the project. Which is, which is choosing which one you're actually gonna do. So it, um, anyway, so any other questions? I'm, I'm sure Joe or Adam or I would be happy to answer. Thank you very I, much. It was, That's it. Okay, Joe. Yeah, I, I mean, just to piggyback on that, I mean, one of the, um, it, it was a lively meeting. <laughs> yeah. um, it was a lively meeting. Uh, the, some of the towns that um, have not signed the agreement yet have made pretty clear that they're interested in getting out of the district, but they haven't stepped up to concretely ask to ask, exit the district. And they really, um, it really creates a catch-22 situation. Um, and uh, one of the spokespeople for, um, for those towns was, um, one of the other selectmen, was very strong in his belief that we should actually write an addendum to the agreement that's already been passed by 10 town meetings, specifically naming towns that will be allowed out on, on day one. Should, should they choose. Um, you might recall that we all, we were one of the communities that adopted the so-called Needham Amendment. We, we resolved as, um, as a board that we would not get in the way of any community that wanted to, to get out. But some of them are feeling that that's not a strong enough guarantee and that they want it really in writing um, that, that they will absolutely not be, not be blocked. So it, it was a lively meeting. 
I can Mr. imagine. Mr. Chairman, through you, may I ask a question on this, if you don't mind? Um, yes, I think. <laughs> I don't know which, but so six want to get out, and their, pri their, their primary reason for not endorsing is because they want to leave, not because they don't like the formula about changing the, the uh, weight of the votes, or is it both? I think that there's a lot of ambiguity. So like, for instance, like Dover, for instance, which is the smallest sending town, under the new agreement, their costs would go way up. And so they're, they are really the easiest example. They should ask to withdraw, but even they haven't pulled the trigger and actually said that they want to withdraw. And there are other towns, um, for instance, like I hadn't heard this until Friday, but Belmont is just apparently their most recent reason that they're unhappy with it is that they don't like the capital allocation on that. But um, there's still lobbying efforts. Uh, Adam, in particular, is working with, they have a group, what do they call it? The um, Some kind of task force. Yeah, they're, they're, they, they've, task force. They, they've created it, like, the Impossible Dream Task Force, which is to go to each of the six towns and convince, I made that up just now. To, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to go to each of the six towns and convince them to, that they should do it. And so, in particular, yeah, Belmont. Okay. okay. Yes. Oh, so. Can I respond just to I don't yeah, to um, the discussion? Yeah, that's fine. So, you know, there's sort of two issues with what uh, Mr. Kiro articulated uh, from the points, point of view of, of the other communities. A, you know, there are representatives from each of the communities at those meetings, but they can't speak for their community. Right. So it creates an almost impossible logistical challenge for all of the communities to put in writing the six communities that think they want out when there's no guarantee that those six communities will go to their town meeting and successfully achieve the right. vote to pull out of the town meeting. So there's sort of like a, almost like a back to the future of space-time continuum of you know, th thinking things are going to happen that might not happen and creating some serious problems. Um, so it, I think th that's probably my two problems in one, but that, that's the challenge. So we are going to meet, as a, we have that internal Minutemen working group, I think we'll pull together a meeting to talk about our, our strategy. but. Um, very challenging. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. And if I may, sir, and if six get out, can we find six to come in? We don't necessarily have. To. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we don't really need to because those six actually only. It was said so at the meeting. Small. I haven't double checked it. They said ten percent. Yeah. I haven't double checked the math. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. It's and I, you you jogged my memory of actually the second thing I wanted uh, to bring up. Most of those six still want to send their students to Minuteman. There's a break-even point in the formula. Uh, I, it's about somewhere between seven and ten students. If you send less than that, it's a better deal for you to be out but still send your students there as a non-member. Mm -hmm. So that, that's sort of the, oh, uh, the balance swing. And, and some of them were upset because the formula in the agreement you know, has a, a minimum, assumes a minimum of five students, yeah. even if they're not sending five. And I'll say that... that um, I think it's fair to say that Arlington was uh, kind of had a bullseye on us from from some corners in the room uh, because we've taken a strong position to defend the the um, the representation of the of the town and and we've we've tied the building project to that and um, there was no one in that hall who was confused about what our position was yeah exactly <laughs> there was no confusion I, each each one of us got up and spoke to it and well, so we've got a bit of a bullseye. Yeah, Thank so. you for the impossible dream task force. <laughs> well, Adam's doing indeed. the work there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Or whatever. Um, <laughs> the, the only other thing I want to mention is I, I think uh, Patsy mentioned Elaine Shea for the Books in Bloom. Uh, I think Elaine might be coming to us, uh, want to come to us the next meeting. I think she's talked to some other members about the work she's been doing on domestic violence with her Upstanders uh, initiative. And as it so happens, we're coming up on um, White Ribbon Day, which is part of the, the Jane Doe initiative where um, with specifically men stand up um, t and take a strong um, uh, stand in, in um, raising awareness against domestic violence. So uh, I can, if you want, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll follow up yeah, with the line. But she gave a call work. over the weekend, and I just wanted to let Excellent. you know that. So that's it. Thank you very much. Um, I have one piece of new business. Um, Last week, I think it was last week, six, um, yeah, maybe two weeks ago with, with the storms. Um, uh, either way, we have uh, two new firefighters. Um, we have two, uh, two individuals graduated from the Firefighter Academy. Um, 
Sean O'Brien and Brian Borges. I um, don't know Brian, but I know Sean um, quite well. He grew up playing Little League. He's a, a good friend of mine. And I'm very happy that both of them um, went to the academy, that they were selected. And I think they'll serve the town incredibly well. Um, and so I'm pretty happy about that. But um, other than that, no new business. We'll and do um, we have a to adjourn in a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. There you go.